Well, this uh, this talk is going to be, I think, in the nature uh, short, hopefully, uh, in the nature of a status report on D4N, um, which I think uh, probably most people in this room are probably are familiar with because it's a it's a research collaboration um, led really by the by the by the by the research professors of Mass Open Cloud, so Ron Krieger and Peter Disneyer and their students. Um, and um, my, name is, um, I, my name is Matt Benjamin. I'm one of the collaborators from, from industry. I'm, I'm, I originally, for the last, well, from 2015 to 2022, I worked for Red Hat uh, as, as the um, engineering manager for, for Ceph Object Storage, uh, which, 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 which is, which, 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 on which t 4 is based. And I'm speaking with um, Amin Masseb um, <laughs> Zadeh, who's, I've been working with him since from 2019 on D4N. Um, and we're going to try to try, try, try to get try to try to focus on um, things we've done in the, in the in the last couple of uh, couple of iterations of, of of that, and also I means new work. Um, just briefly, um, D D4N is a cache, an intermediate cache, uh, for materialized intermediate cache for S3 object data primarily. Uh, and its, pur its purpose is to is, is, is largely to accelerate computation in large data lakes, uh, and it's gone through a number of different uh, dimensions. The original D3N um, is, is is a more static topology for such a cache. Um, D4N added a added a, a, a distributed directory, um, allowing us to do more sophisticated things, uh, and it's and it's kind of the the foundation for everything we're going to be talking about here. Um, I'm gonna, my part is going to be about D4N upstreaming, and and um, and it means it's going to be about the locality piece. Um, so, so, so I've kind of said the thing I want to say here. Um, my my t you know my, my you know my as as, as, an, as a storage engineer working on Ceph, um, the the the, the massive open cloud you know, uh, collaboration has offered an opportunity to um, to to incorporate uh, data center scale. Um, workload intelligence in, directly into the object storage layer, and and, and that was my, that was what excited me about this project. Um, it, it, it's, it remains exciting to different to different strands of of, of development and deployment within my, my two organizations. Um, Ceph, Ceph had been widely and a Ceph object storage has been, has been widely used as a databases for uh, a, a variety of kinds of computation uh, from Hadoop um, then into Spark and sort of on, on 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 into other data lake functions, Presto and Trino now. So, 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 so technology like D4, D4N uh, enable, en enables a bunch of different kinds of workload intelligence to be added into the storage directly, as opposed to d bolting on another kind of cache. And, and a lot of our interest is in, is in, is in incorporating that. Um, and so, some of what we've done here in the past, S3A is, is describes some of those workload in integrations. Uh, S3 Select is a, is a sort of primitive form of S3 enabled uh, predicate pushdown, so you can inject queries into the S3. Storage service and then return consolidated results. And this is this one's by Amazon, and some of our our work extends that. And so, among those things, we have we have a, an Aeroflight uh, interface uh, to to uh, to the set object storage, and and we also have Flight SQL experiments going on. And specifically, the things. Um, my, my team is working on this, this, this last, I don't know, 12, 12 or 13 months, uh, is incorporating all of the D4N research work over the last, I don't know, four years uh, into, the, into the open source uh, Ceph project. That, that's, that's, in, that's involved the work of a, something like seven different members of my team, plus work by all of the folks that work with uh, Mass Open Cloud. So I'll skip past some of this stuff, but, 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 but that's some of the stuff that's, um, that's, that's in there. Um, we, in order to, in order to Basically, take all the all the research work that was done by Mass Open Cloud researchers and put it into an open source Ceph project. We really had to sort of rewrite <laughs> a large chunk of the object store. Uh, we did that, and we now have a sort of a pluggable architecture for uh, for incorporating uh, different 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 layers of functionality. Uh, Cache is a kind of a redirector uh, layer, and, the, and there's there's, on, there's now flexible backends, so we can put data in different locations and stuff like that. Okay, and that's kind of a picture of some of what 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 that is. Okay. So, I'm going to kind of, and I'm going to kind of skip past this. But this, but there's, but this is de this, this is detail on how uh, <coughs> we've actually gone about that. Um, most, most of it's stuff that's already in, already in the research D4, D4N, um, but we're incorporating it in, in, in a new way. Um, as I say, also, it's mostly about internal software, in, software interfaces. Um, D4N is a, as a you know, start, started off as a read cache, or, D, or D3N did. Uh, D4N as a, as a, as a write-back cache has a lot more sophisticated capabilities around that. Um, and, we're, and we're incorporating that in, new, in, in the new work. Okay, I'll turn it over to you. I mean, for, for the, for the next part. 
Okay. So, uh, Matt, can, thank you. So, Matt discussed about the engineering side of our collaboration. I am going to discuss about the research side of our collaboration. So, in our initial design, uh, we had a right tier expanded to several racks, and we exploited Ceph's internal structure to replicate data. The problem was that we didn't know where is the data. So we changed the uh, design to have a read and write cache on top of each rack. And we use RGW's internal logic to replicate data. What does it mean is that read after write requests always will be served locally. And this is important for machine learning applications because they have a significant amount of uh, intermediate results. Now that we have the locality, we want to expand this uh, cache across data center. Why? Because as Larry explained it, the vision is sharing. And we want to provide a community cache that provides sharing. So, uh, an example here is training data sets for machine learning uh, training models. The training data set usually is the same while training models are different. So sharing is important here. We have several options to develop this idea. From starting S3 uh, protocol, which is, uh, provides a standard interface, to MVME over TCP to RDMA, which probably will need a hardware support, but will provide better uh, performance. Now that we have extended our cache across data center, we want to make sure that each application is able to access its data from nearest RGW. Previously, we did this by controlling switches, but now we want to use Kubernetes topology aware routing to do that. Here, each pod in Kubernetes cluster that can be extended to several racks should be able to get its data from its uh, local RGW. A D4N, a community cache uh, across data center, can decrease uh, uh, inter-data, inter-rack uh, network uh, traffic, increase um, performance, decrease runtime. So it has uh, different use cases. One of these use cases is analytical framework, which Matt will discuss in the next slides. Another uh, use case is machine learnings that, as I said, have a lot of read af uh, after write requests, which are perfect for caching. Another use case is to caching snapshots of progress stages of uh, machine learning, which helps us to reduce the restarting time if in case of a failure. Okay, so yeah, so, again, so, so I've, I've, co I've covered, covered a couple of things, but I have a group of, I, have, I sort of have two groups of engineers in my team. One, one is working on the upstreaming of D4N itself, uh, and, 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 and well, there's, several, there's more groups. But the, but the other one that's working on convergent uh, activity is, 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 is this, um, is my BADAS team, big data <laughs> analytics support. Um, and, and we're working on things, and th things like workload integration for, for, for Spark and for Presti, Presto and, and, some, and some other technologies based on that. Um, the, the, the goal the goal of some of this some of, some of this some of this work is to accept, is to make is to make the uh, is to improve on the efficiency of s3 select and, and, and both both in terms of the query capabilities uh, and also in terms of the data set uh, um, trans translation you know, trans or, or transport model um, s3 select is pretty inefficient about that uh, arrow is a natural format uh, for doing that and it has very good bindings to to network transports so that, that's some of that um, Arrow, Arrow and Airflight are, are natural, as, as, as the states, a, a, a natural format for returning and for, for doing computation in, in, in core and in, in, in different computational locations, but also transferring it over, the, you know, back and forth uh, between between compute nodes or back to clients. Uh, and and there's all kinds of work going on to to sort of incorporate new capabilities there. Flight SQL is one that's um, that's got a bunch of personalities and putting putting different kinds of uh, param, param, parameterized uh, queries into, into 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 data requests and getting back Arrow. Um, there's some summary of, of what things uh, people did 
in and, and might be doing. Um, a summary of the research that was already done on D3N and D4N and, and some of what we've already covered. Um, a, su a summary of the people, some of the people who worked on, 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 on all of this. Going, so, some, of this some people started back as, as, far, as early as, I think, 2017 or 2018. Um, and and uh, Ur Kenar and Mania Abdi, um, both did dissertations that focused on different aspects of, 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 D4, of D3N and D4N. Uh, and, 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 and in, in particular, um, both worked on uh, workload integration for, uh, for, for Hadoop, for, well, for, I think for Pig and for Spark and, 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 and similar uh, frameworks. Um, these are some of the members of my team that, th that worked on this project just, just this year. Um, and <laughs> take questions. So first I want to say this is a super cool example of what we've been able to do of having uh, graduate students work on research um, but actually working with a team that then can actually integrate so the thing you're doing has an impact. Um, and one of the other things that we've decided to do in, in, on our side here is um, this was motivated by real problems we had of the performance of the shared storage. Um, and, you know, we have high capacity drives, we have Nessie, um, it's on the other side of a network with limited bandwidth. Um, we now um, have a concrete plan where we're going to have on every rack in the MOC, um, NVMe storage, um, and with this approach that we talked about of using the, route, the topology where routing for Kubernetes, all requests will always go to the rack local um, instance. And, um, you know, this is going to be an experimental service. And one thing I'm really curious about for the community here, we think this will give much higher performance, or we strongly believe that. We have the Nessie storage, but we also have a couple of petabytes of, of research storage that we're putting into this, as well as these rack local things. How many people would be willing to use an experimental service that, you know, you'd have to explicitly copy your data back to the reliable production service? This is something we'd like to start doing, is offering new fun features that are high risk, but hopefully higher performance. Um, but you as a researcher would have to manage your data and, and copy it back to something that's actually guaranteed reliable. Well, that's, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll get more reception once we actually do it. Um, what's that? Ah, who wouldn't do it? Ah, much better response. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the things I'd like, like, so it's going to be a long period of time until it's fully upstreamed, until it's released back in product, until we can incorporate it as a supported feature, you know, in the production cloud services. And one of the things we're trying to figure out is how to, how to speed up that loop to at least offer things as experimental features um, to get things into people's hands faster, but also to get experience then for the teams that are doing the upstreaming and the production work of real usage of what they're doing. 